And good morning everyone. Welcome to the Science Center and welcome to the Hot Zone. Today we're following a breaking news story. We're following the story about an earthquake that has hit Japan earlier this morning at around uh, quarter to one Toronto time. The earthquake was extremely powerful. It measured 8.9 on the Richter scale and it hit just off of the coast of Japan, uh, near the t uh, town of Sendai. The earthquake was quite shallow, about 25 kilometers deep, and roughly about 40 kilometers off of the coast of Japan. Now, it had happened under sea, and that also caused the creation of a large tsunami, and tsunami is a huge tidal wave. The wave that has hit the coast of Japan was about uh, 10 meters high. That's pretty much a three-story uh, building. It created uh, a lot of devastation, a lot of destruction. Later on, we will be uh, playing a live feed from the BBC with some video recorded earlier. Now, Japan is very prone to earthquakes simply because it resides on one of the areas that uh, is most susceptible to earthquakes uh, in the world. It sits on the so-called Ring of Fire. And the Ring of Fire actually represents uh, the boundary of the Pacific tectonic plate. Now, what is a tectonic plate? First of all, we know that the Earth's crust is not a solid shell, like an eggshell. It's actually broken up in plates, and those plates are moving around on uh, the softer layers of rock underneath. And as those plates move around, on the boundaries we have volcanic activity, and there's plenty of volcanoes right there where Japan is, uh, and we have very strong earthquakes. This particular earthquake was caused uh, by a so-called thrust fault. What happens is that the Pacific uh, tectonic plate is actually sliding uh, eastbound, sorry, westbound, uh, underneath the Eurasian plate. Now, the sliding is not as smooth as shown here, but uh, as the plates press against each other, there's a lot of energy buildup in, uh, in the... In the in the boundary layer, and when the energy is big enough, it will release explosively uh, and in a form of an earthquake. When you're near the ocean and there is an earthquake underneath the ocean floor, uh, it can generate um, some very powerful waves. The energy of the earthquake uh, makes uh, a massive amount of water in the ocean move, and um, a tsunami is uh, in the open ocean. Uh, will have a, a speed of up to 800 kilometers an hour, but the waves are very far apart and they're very shallow, maybe just a meter. So if you were in the middle of, the, of a, an ocean when um, a tsunami happened, uh, your boat would move up and down gradually, but w as you get closer to shore, the water becomes shallower, the uh, energy of that water remains the same, but it builds up into a very high wave that can be as high as 30 meters and the tsunami wave that hit Japan uh, a, a number of hours ago uh, was a 10-meter wave, and that caused a tremendous amount of damage. Uh, boats and debris washed inshore, covered farmers' fields. Um, the, the wave uh, damaged an oil refinery and caused fire. So it, it seems that the tsunami uh, damage is, uh, is very significant at this point. Coincidentally, we happen to have uh, an exhibit called uh, Nature Unleashed here at the Science Center that shows uh, earthquakes, tsunamis, and some other natural disasters like uh, tornadoes and hurricanes. Um, and uh, there's a map that's actually showing uh, the damage or where the uh, earthquake uh, in Japan has struck. Uh, it's sort of a real-time map and uh, showing the uh, also some footage that a lot of people saw in December 26, 2004 when a disastrous uh, tsunami uh, resulting from an earthquake struck uh, Southeast Asia. Some natural disasters are, um, are easier to predict and uh, what you want to do with that is to give people warnings so they can get away from the area. You can get away from the path of a tornado. We're better at predicting uh, when tornadoes will strike. Um, getting people out, out of the danger areas is, some, is sometimes uh, trickier. 
Uh, hurricanes, you can see the path of a hurricane. You can, uh, you can do something to protect your property and protect yourself. Uh, volcanic eruptions, there are sensors on volcanoes. There's lots of warning signs about volcanic eruptions. But earthquakes are really, really difficult to, to predict. Uh, we, you can measure uh, earth um, crust activity uh, with, with instruments called seismographs that will measure uh, movement uh, in the earth. And, you know, hundreds of tiny, tiny earthquakes happen all the time. You can go on the internet, actually, and see what uh, is happening with earthquakes all around the world uh, in real time. Um, but to predict when a major earthquake will uh, occur, we have no idea.